Overheat's game time. Konnichiwa, Internet, and welcome to this episode of Overheat's Game Time Bruises. So, I got a hold of Yatagara's uh, Attack on the Katakrizum. Um, it's an indie fighting game. It's an indie fighting game. Uh, it's made from a group of people who basically are from SNK. They're responsible for, uh, you know, development within the King of Fighters franchise. And the, um, I believe, probably Samurai Showdown and The Last Blade as well, but for sure King of Fighters. And uh, the, the guy who directed this game is the same guy who directed um, King of uh, Street Fighter III Third Strike. So it definitely looks like a game that's sort of a mix of an SNK game with Third Strike. Uh, the buttons are fairly straightforward. This is a very straightforward fighting game. There's no weird... There's no... I guess there's weird, isn't there? Uh, there's no weird systems to learn. It's very straightforward. Uh, there's just supers. Um, there's parries. Uh, parries are actually buttons. You have high, high, high parry, low parry. So um, I, I've run through each character. To sort of figure them out, uh, I haven't really found anybody that immediately clicked with me, but there are some pretty cool characters in here. So let's uh, jump in, and give it a shot here. See what we got. Let's just go ahead and jump right into a uh, jump right into a ranked match. Wait in training mode. I'll probably cut out the waiting and training mode stuff. I think I'm probably going to start with this guy. All right. Um, I like this character too, but I have no idea how he works. Uh, he's really weird. I usually like boxing characters. They're usually kind of fun and rush downy, but I'm not entirely sure how he works. But since you know I'm showing this new game off, I'll go ahead and uh, pick him so we can see him. All right, James Chenzor. Again, um, I am subscribed to his channel, um, Ultra David, or Ultra Chen TV. Uh, they do a really cool show every Tuesday, uh, where they talk about the fighting game community at large. Um, they're very even. <clears throat> they're very even-handed in their um, their take on most fighting game stuff. They don't try to crap on stuff immediately. I kind of like that. A lot of fighting game guys, when they start talking about fighting games that they're not really into, they really don't have anything intelligent to say about them. They don't usually have anything intelligent to say about them, they just kind of crap on them and think it's funny. Um, because they don't understand comedy, okay? Everybody knows comedy, if you want to be funny, you need to know what you're talking about. Because... If I know what you're talking about... Oh, whoa, what the hell was that? If I know what you're talking about, and you don't, and you're trying to make fun of it, you're just going to sound like an ass. Other people might think you're funny also who don't know what you're talking about. But that's the real trick. If you want to be funny, you got to know what you're talking about. Ah! Yeah, see, this guy is really, really weird. I do not understand him at all. Like, I clearly don't know something about him, because, like, almost all of his moves don't knock down and then put him at what seems like disadvantage, so I don't really understand him at all. Yeah, that instantly guard crushed me. That, that's good to know. Yeah, his uh, standing jab seems like it has a lot of really good... Wow, he's just covering everything I try to do. Boom, there you go. Rocket punch. There we go. Yeah, so that's why I like Ultra Chin. They actually attempt to learn the game before they talk about it. And if they honestly don't know much about the game, they will upfront say, I don't know that much about the game. And they will be very... <clears throat> thoughtful with what they say. So yeah, um, if you're interested in the fighting game community, I would say they're a great place to start before you find what games you really like, because they sort of cover everything to the best of their ability. 
Hey man, you're supposed to be on my side. <laughs> That's some pretty good damage. Whoa, I didn't even... Hmm. Okay. So, um... Street Fighter 4 has a super crappy thing where once you start blocking, you can kind of do whatever you want while you're in block stun. So once you start blocking, you can just mash for an uppercut. And as soon as your opponent's block string is no longer a true block string, you'll immediately interrupt it with an uppercut. And I was attempting to see if this game has that by mashing uppercut after I blocked the first couple of hits. And I immediately got punished for it, so... Ah. Okay, he's got an uppercut. get the move out in time. Is that a, is that seriously an uppercut with kick? Oh jeez, here it comes. Ah, I caught you doing something. Boom, there it is, the Dudley sweep. <laughs> yeah, you'll have to excuse the incredibly low-level play, but I literally bought this today, like a 45 minutes ago, because I wanted to show it off to you guys. But, um, like I said, I tried to play online and just... I don't know, I was just I would sit there for like 10 minutes and then somebody would challenge me and I would get crushed and then I would wait another 15 minutes and someone would challenge me and I'd get crushed and it was just getting kind of annoying, so... Um, uh, but I will say, uh, it was definitely no fault of the actual netcodes. The few times I actually got challenges, the netcode was perfect. Uh, you can set the input delay for whatever you want. I had it set at 1, which might have been the reason that it was taking so long to get challenges, but I moved it up to 4 and 5, and I still wasn't getting any challenges, so... Yeah, I don't know. Okay, enough. Enough! Enough! Stop talking to me. Yeah, the backgrounds look really nice. It's sort of a bummer that they went with Super Hyra's artwork, because as you can see, they couldn't really spend enough money to um, make them animated, which is kind of a bummer. It would have been nice if they were animated. That's a really good move. And the fierce punch when he actually moves forward a little bit. So no. All right, I'll see him if uh, he had any uh, invuln frames on his uppercut move, but he doesn't apparently. Oof. Yeah, this guy's really weird. I don't understand him. He. It seems like a lot of his moves don't knock down and don't necessarily put him at advantage and in some cases it almost feels like he's at disadvantage um, he doesn't again I could be totally wrong but I can't seem to find anything with uh, invuln frames for like a wake up show you can kind of a deal like he has an uppercut right there but it doesn't work as a, as a wake up <laughs> Ducking, like, even weirder is ducking jab doesn't work with him. Like, what boxer in any video game doesn't work with ducking jab? I mean, <laughs> that's just super weird. Like, because of who he is, I just keep defaulting, even though it doesn't work, I keep defaulting to that ducking jab. And... No bueno, bro. No bueno. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed what you saw, like it. If you want to see more, click that subscribe button. If you have any questions or suggestions you'd like to throw out there, drop them in the comments section below. That's it for today, Internet. Johnny, bye-bye.